Yo, what's up guys and welcome to our first NHL 18 franchise mode series. So in NHL 17, we started off in the Metropolitan Division with the New York Islanders and then we moved over to the Pacific Division with the Vancouver Canucks most recently. And now we're here in NHL 18 and we are moving to the Central Division with the Minnesota Wild. And even though um, in the, our poll we uh, did with... Um, that I posted in the description of every single video. Even though there was no votes for the Minnesota Wild, I did a poll inside of a franchise group if you guys want to check that out. Link will be in the description. Um, and most people said I should do the Minnesota Wild, so that's who we're going to take control of for our first GM mode here in NHL 18. So my GM name, as always, is going to be Snipe and Score, just because that's what I always do, um, at least for the last two GM modes I've done. So we'll name ourselves that. And the reason I also want to do Minnesota to an extent is because they are also like the Islanders and Vancouver in a sense. Like they're kind of in the middle of a rebuild. Um, and they're kind of like a midst of a playoff team and a bit not. And then I also have a lot of older kind of guys like Ryan Suter, Zaprize, who have really bad contracts. Kind of old guys like that. And then they also have some good young talents, like players I had to make, like Kirill Kaprizov, Jordan Greenaway, that sort of thing. So we're going to do the Minnesota Wild, and no, we're not going to customize the 31st AHL team, so we're just going to go ahead and continue. So owner mode is always is going to be off, because you guys don't like to see prices of food and stuff like that, and neither do I really, so we're going to turn that off. CPU trades are obviously going to be on. Assistant coach edge lines is going to be off because I always edit my own lines. Player morale is... We're going to keep it on, but we're going to turn morale meetings off. And that way we don't get notifications about people and have to like talk them, talk to them and stuff like that. We just have players like losing morale because of their ice time and all that sort of idea. Because that's like a new setting in NHL 18 for you guys who haven't played it yet. More than likely you've seen videos on it um, already, so... I'm not going to go in depth with it. Um, salary cap on, waivers on, and yeah, that looks good. So let's continue with that. Um, now let's go into our rules and settings here quickly. Um, so we are going to put the period length, as we always do, to 20 minutes. Even though that's a lot longer, it's just going to give it more of a realistic uh, preset to the game, I think, in a sense, because players get more shots and all that sort of thing. Um, and we're going to try and put it to like in the middle of full sim and in the middle of arcade. So right there, leaning towards more full sim mode. I'm also going to change the difficulty to superstar. And I'm going to change the trade difficulty to hard. That way we could have more realistic kind of trades. And I am going to, I think that's going to be it for that. So that looks good to me. Let's just make sure the event settings. Um, auto rotate goals. Yes, 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 yes. We do want to keep the uh, no, not media notifications. We do want though the um, where is it? The scouting assignment uh, warnings to pop up because I do like to send out my scout to certain places, um, not just have them at random. That is also a new thing in NHL 18. Um, and then also there's still the injury bugs. So 50 out of 100, there will still be a shit ton of injuries. So we're going to turn this down all the way to, I think I had it at 9 when I was doing a practice run with Wild. And it worked out like there wasn't a lot of injuries, but there wasn't uh, too much of them either. So, so we're going to put that down to 9 and that should be fine. Yeah, I think that's good. So yeah, let's start that up. Our AHL team is the Iowa Wild. Um, we're just basically in this episode going to go through the entire team's roster in the NHL and AHL. And then you guys can let me know what you want me to do really with this team in year number one. Do we want to go for a Stanley Cup or do we want to kind of trade away our big guys and go for like kind of a rebuild or retool, I should say. Um, also, a new thing that I'm having with franchise mode in NHL 18 is I am going to be having a Google Docs sheet, or well, a Google Sheets page, basically like an Excel page online where you guys could see all the stats from our players from every single season. You could also see stats from around the league and all that sort of idea. That way you guys could suggest any like potential trades easier, 
or if you can't watch a, an entire 20 something minute episode of GM mode instead you could click that link and you could just see what you missed out on pretty much so it's a way to get more engagement I hope with this series so anyways we're up here with this the menu looks a lot nicer I really like it it's a lot faster um, the sim engine is really quick too um, so yeah let's take a look at our roster so we'll go to view contracts I guess because I think that's usually where I go when I start up GM modes I haven't started up a GM mode since February so I'm a little rusty with that so let's see main roster yeah let's go centers okay so we have sorted by overall so we have Mikhail Greenland obviously he might be like a centerpiece to this GM mode he's medium elite 85 overall which is like an 87 in NHL 17 um, he's only 25 and yeah he's a really good young player um, he was in our Canucks GM mode as well which is kind of an interesting thing to point out um, behind him we have Charlie Coyle who's an 84 medium top 6 25 as well so he's another good young guy he's on a good deal as well 3.2 for three years we have Miko Koivu and Miko Koivu is a bit of a wild card yeah he is a captain and I just said wild card I just realized yeah he is the captain of this team however he only has one year left at 6.75 like do we want to re-sign this guy or do we let him go to free agency is the question for next season um or the upcoming season um then we also have Joel Erickson Eck he's our like prospect number one like center kind of prospect kind of guy um He's also medium top six and he's 20 years of age, 77 overall, which is pretty solid for a 20 year old with the new rating system. Then we have Kyle Rao. This guy's going to go back down to the minors more likely because he's just an AHL kind of guy. I don't even know why he's on the NHL team to begin with. Next up, we have the left wingers. This is where it gets a little age concerning. We have Eric Stahl, who's 32. We could potentially move him out year number one if we want to, or we could hold on to him because he is a nice 85 overall as well. Then we have Zach Parise. This is where it gets scary. $7.54 million for like seven years. I don't even know how much years he has on his contract, but he has a lot of years. And he wants, like, well, he's making a lot of money and he's only an 83, which is kind of like an 85. Um, he's probably going to be dropping an overall over the course of the season because he is only, th or he is already 33. Um, behind him we have Jason Zucker who is also 25 like Granlund and he also is a medium top 6 like Coyle so he's another kind of guy that we could kind of build this team around. Then we have, uh, not uh, I was going to say Mike Foligno but Marcus Foligno. He is a high bottom 6. He's also pretty good penalty killer I think. Um, big size and everything like that so he's good for our fourth line. I think we could bring him back for a couple of years because he is making only 2.25 good fourth line uh, contract, I believe. Now onto the right wing. I like to keep Nino Niederreiter for quite a few years if I can. He's a very good uh, utility kind of guy, good sniper. Um, no really weakness except for his physical categories. So he's a very good player to have on the team and he's young and he's not making that much this season. So if we give him a contract extension. He might only want like say just over three million dollars so um, one guy I don't like here is Tyler Ennis and Tyler Ennis is 27 which is not the oldest but he is listed as a depth forward and he's making four and a half million dollars well just a bit over four and a half for two years this is one of the guys I would like to ship out same with Chris Stewart he's making not that much money but he is old and he is probably dropping off soon I don't know when they usually retire in NHL 18 yet so but there's Chris Stewart defensively this is where we are a strong team so we have Ryan Suter 89 overall but look at this 7.54 mil just like Parise for a really long term so he's one of these guys even though he has a no movement clause in real life we'd like to ship out probably uh, Jared Spurgeon's pretty nice 27 84 overall he is making only just over five million dollars for three years so good till he's 30 then Jonas Brodeen here's a good one he's 24 years of age 83 overall medium elite potential so he could grow really nicely for us um, in my test run I had him grow to an 87 um, then we also have Matt Dumbo he's a high top four so this guy could also be pretty good for us 
and he's only 23. He's going to want a contract extension at just over $3 million, I believe. Um, then we have kind of like depth kind of defenseman, top six kind of guys. So we have Kyle Quincy. Quincy's not the greatest. He's a bit old as well. He's only on a one-year deal, though, so we could just let him go in free agency after year number one. Then we have Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy is nice and young as well, and he could still grow. So maybe we hold on to him for the bottom defensive pairing or as a depth kind of guy down the road. Now on to gold handers. We have Devin Dubnik. He's our biggest player on the team, probably um, size-wise as well. Uh, $4.335 million for four years. So he's signed until he probably retires. So we'll probably just keep him around for most of that. Um, and then we have Alex Daylock as our backup. We might want to upgrade our backup situation because the 77 is not really that good of one. We could probably find like an 83 or something instead to have behind Devin Dubnik. I'll show you guys also free agents in this so you could see it, who we should go after. Um, and now in the system, we have not a lot of prospect goaltenders. Um, that's something we might want to look forward to in the draft. We might want to go after someone like Alexis Gravel from our Canucks GM mode. Um, that would be kind of interesting. We might want to go after some other prospect goaltender. Um, let me know who you think we should go after draft-wise. Um, as you can see, we only have Nicholas Fedberg, who's already past his prime 77 overall, so he could be an NHL backup, kind of. Then we have Gustafson, who's pretty much past his prime as well. He's not going to grow much more. We also have Kakinen, who's a medium fringe starter, which is not really the greatest potential-wise. And then we have Stephen McCulloch, who's an AHL starter. Um, then on the defensive prospect side, we have Mike Riley, who's almost past his prime, but he could still grow. Like I, when I did my test run, he grew to like a 79 or something like that, so he could take over that top six role on our team. Maybe even better if we grow him right. Then we also have Gustav Olsson, who could potentially grow to be something good for our defensive core, too. Um, Grant's past his prime, so who cares about Grant? He's just going to be an AHLer for us. Same with Palmquist, really. Um, Sealer, Warner, Gustav Borman, and then Sigelin and Chisholm. Those guys are all 7th defensemen. Uh, so we might need some more defensive prospects in this organization. As you can see, most of them are medium 7th Bs, so... We might want to find some more like top four kind of guys that could play once people like Suter retire. So that's defensemen. Now we go into the right wingers and we have Landon Ferraro. He's past his prime as well. He's the best player on the AHL team for forwards almost. Um, we also have Christoph Berchi who could still grow. He's a high AHL top six. 69 overall though for 23 years of age. Uh, Zach Mitchell, Curtis Gabriel, and then Lang, I don't think he's going to turn out to be anything, but he is only 21, so you never know. He could get up into the high 60s, maybe even the 70s if we're lucky. Uh, we also have Ivan Lundina. This guy might be the best prospect that is in the game, that was in the game at the beginning. He's a bottom six sniper. I don't know if you guys think we should edit him, edit him at all. Uh, he was a third round pick just in 2017, so he's one of our bigger prospects. And then I had to make some guys for this. I don't know if you guys agree with these overalls and stuff like that. But I had to make Kirill Kaprizov. He is a high top six. So he could potentially be our best left winger. And replace someone like Parise. I have him as a 70 overall to start off with. Um, currently he actually doesn't have an NHL contract. He's in the KHL. But I am just basically putting him in the game. Because I think he will be on the Minnesota Wild by... 2018-19 and he is listed as the best prospect in my hockey news magazine for the Minnesota Wild and you also have Jordan Greenway who I had to make or Greenway who's a left wing power forward 6'5 230 pounds this guy also could be something good for the team um, and then this guy was already in the game Mario Lusa this guy could maybe grow to be a bottom six player for an NHL team I had him do it in my uh, practice run as well so maybe he grows to be something, I don't know. And now we go on to centers. We have Cal O'Reilly, 73 overall, past his prime, same with Pat Cannon. And then I also had to make Luke Coonan, who is a center sniper, 6'3", 193. Uh, once again, if you guys don't agree with any of these overalls or potentials, let me know who you would change down below in the comments. Um, so yeah, there's Luke Coonan, another medium top six potential player. 
uh, but he is younger. He's 19 years of age in comparison to Greenway is 20 years of age. Then we also have Gilmore, who's not going to be anything probably same with Anas. Uh, Sokolov's a good prospect, kind of. He's listed as a low top nine in this, but and he was a seventh round in 2016, but he could be maybe a top six kind of guy almost. I don't know for sure because I don't know anything really about the guy, but he's a 63 overall 19 year old, so maybe he makes the NHL team eventually. We also have Mason Shaw, medium bottom six, 60 overall, 18 years of age. He could be something, same with Dante Salaturo, high AHL top six forward, 59 overall, 20 years of age. He came over from Columbus in the Jordan Schrader trade. And yeah, that's basically all our prospects down in the minors and on our NHL team. So yeah, once again, like I was saying, guys, if you don't agree with any of these guys' overalls or potentials, I could change them up for next episode because I'm not going to just save this file probably afterwards. Um, I'm just going to use this as kind of a guide for next episode. So if you think anybody should be changed, let me know down below in the comments and I will adjust them accordingly. So that is all of our contracts. Um, there was some unsigned guys as well, but nobody huge, I think. Um, so now I guess I could show you guys quickly what the lines look like currently. Um, we might have to change it up a bit because... There is some things that I don't agree with, like Granlund in real life, he's been playing as a right winger a lot. So we could potentially go something like Granlund on the right side, maybe have Mika Koivu as the number one center, uh, Charlie Coyle as the second line center, um, and then put Nino Niederreiter as the right winger on the second line, kind of have it like this for our top six, and then maybe have someone like who has good face-offs. I think Chris Stewart might. No, he doesn't. We might be able to move like Erickson Eck up there, put Zucker there, and put Felino is like the fourth line center. Yeah, Felino has good face off. So maybe something more like this if you guys think that's a good idea. We could do that. We could also send down Route to the minors probably because I don't think we're going to keep him on the NHL team. Defensively, I think it could stay the same because that looks pretty nice for me. Suter and Spurgeon, Prodine and Dumba, Quincy and Murphy. And then goaltending, obviously, we don't really need to touch on at all. Down in the minors, we have Spedberg and Gustafson as our top two our, our goaltenders. We could always put in Kakinen or McCulloch if you guys think we should do that as well. Um, and then forward-wise, we should probably put in all of our guys that have pros or like potential in there. So uh, I already have Kaprizov on the second line, and I have Greenway on the fourth line. And Luke Kunin on the third line center. That way they those guys grow nicely for us. I don't know if they're going to grow too much or they're going to grow too little. Hopefully they pan out. So anyways, that is the lines. Now we could go to, I guess, free agency and show you guys who's available. Um, I don't know exactly what we want for the team because our team it looks pretty solid. Maybe some bottom six kind of guys and maybe we make some trades already. I don't know. But some guys that are available, Vanek, Yager, Markov, Depre. Obviously, some of these guys in real life don't play for or aren't free agents anymore. Vanek's in Vancouver. Um, Markov is in Russia somewhere. Same with Depre, all that sort of thing. So, but if you see anything that is interesting to you guys that you would like us to bring to the team, let me know with that. We could also sort by potential. Here's someone like Alexi Sorella, who's a top six forward. He might be something nice to bring in, 20 years of age, but not a very good overall. Um, so yeah, that's the free agents and all the contracts. Um, I think that's all I wanted to do for this opening episode. So um, like I said in the beginning of the episode, guys, make sure you go and uh, check out our Google Sheets page where I'll be constantly updating anything that happens in this GMO with scores. Like, well, basically I'll be tracking all our points from players from the NHL, AHL, and I'll also be tracking all the trades, the signings, all that sort of stuff that we do during the season, and that sort of idea, kind of, yeah, pretty much everything that's in a GM mode, so all the words as well, so yeah, go check that out, and yeah, if you haven't already, go check out my friend uh, Jay Bryland, Sabres fan, he's going to be doing a Calgary Flames GM mode on his channel. Um, if you guys like the Flames, and then also my friend Derek on uh, the Franchise Mode group. He is doing a Philadelphia Flyers GM mode, and he's actually getting some mad views and good subs. So 
he's doing really good so far with his channel so um yeah go check out those guys uh links will be in the description below so anyways guys that's going to do it for this first episode of our minnesota wild gym mode so next episode we'll basically do whatever you guys uh wanted like ch changes to the roster um and then we'll start up the season simulation and probably get all the way up to the trade deadline for episode three so thank you guys for watching see you guys next time Thank you